Hey everybody, Mike Pastor here. I'm going to talk to you about muscle contractions and the different types of muscle contractions. So on the fundamental level, we have two types of contractions. We have a isometric contraction and an isotonic contraction. So within isotonic contractions, you have concentric and eccentric, which most of you have probably heard about by this point. So concentric is we're thinking positive work. So I'm curling a dumbbell, I'm pressing a barbell or pressing a kettlebell overhead. Um, also acceleration, uh, when we're moving one joint, one, uh, one part of the body in relation to another, um, and the shortening of the muscle. So what we generally think of as a contraction. Okay. So then we're going to have an eccentric contraction, which is going to be, uh, deceleration, the lowering, the lengthening of the, uh, of the muscle. So again, at the opposite end of a uh, bicep curl or I'm lowering, a barbell and lengthening through the chest muscles, right? So um, the eccentric contraction is going to be when the external load is greater than the force that I'm going to generate, and that's going to be whether we're talking voluntary or involuntarily. So uh, voluntarily, again, we'll use the barbell bench press as an example. I'm, I'm lowering the, the barbell using my muscles as a break. Um, to, and allowing them to lengthen. So that would be your eccentric contraction under a voluntary situation. Um, and then if you've ever done negatives or seen anyone do negatives where with a barbell bench press will, they'll put on uh, an external load that they cannot lift. They'll have the spotter lifted and then they'll, they'll kind of lower it or forced reps at the end when you fatigued. Um, that would be like an involuntary, um, in an involuntary situation when the external external load is greater than the force that we're going to generate and then with the concentric attraction we have the external load is not is 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 less than the force that we can generate right so it i can press the barbell away or i can i can curl the dumbbell up All right so those are going to be your concept concentric and eccentric contractions again think positive work negative work acceleration and deceleration uh eccentric contraction coming down steps running downhill a uh, lineman slowing down his stance as he runs up to the line of scrimmage so those would be things that you can think about um, when we think about eccentric contractions right so then we have isometric contractions okay so this is when we're gonna when we're gonna fix a joint so that the other another joint can move freely so um a good way to look at this think of um, a overhead kettlebell press for example so i'm going to have an isometric contraction in my trunk so it allows for my shoulder to have a good platform to be able to press out of in a concentric fashion and then lower the weight safely in an eccentric fashion right while maintaining this isometric contraction in the trunk i don't want to have a, a smushy base to kind of press to press out of you, you know you're probably seeing people pressing their bodies moving kind of moving all over the place right well, also, I'm going to have an eccentric contraction. I mean, I'm sorry, an isometric contraction within the grip as well, right? So in, in pretty much every exercise and movement, you're going to have all three of these types of contractions present, okay? Uh, another good one to think about is maybe a plyometric push-up, right? So I'm going to have an eccentric contraction as I lower to the floor, immediately followed by a concentric contraction, and while maintaining an isometric contraction within the trunk, uh, so again, to allow for a good platform for absorption of force to reduce the amount of coupling time, change directions, and press out in a concentric fashion, right? I don't want here, I, this is going to be definitely a situation where I don't want my body just kind of loose because that's going to limit the amount of force I'm, I'm able to generate when I'm, I'm pressing out or when, when I land back into the floor to try to, you know, to lower myself back and, again, reduce that coupling time, reduce that contact time with the floor, right? So also within isometrics, um, there's a few different, you know, principles you can follow. One would be the yielding isometric principle. Um, so an example of that would be an, a yielding iso pull-up. So we're going to pull ourselves up to the top of the bar, and we're going to set it, uh, we're going to hold for a certain amount of time. But as we fatigue, the muscle, as the muscle fibers fatigue, the body will start to slowly lower itself and instead of like trying to re-pull yourself to the top you just kind of maintain that new lower so example if i'm here in this chin up position i lower to here then i would try to maintain here and while that is happening we're recruiting more and more muscle fibers right so i'm not actively lowering i'm not actively pulling i'm just trying to maintain those new positions and we're going to get more muscle fibers are going to fire and get turned online the longer that we can hold into the that yielding isometric um, and that's used a lot generally, uh, we, well, we like to use that a lot for rehabilitation of, of like muscular injuries, um, like minor muscular injuries. 
and to help kind of keep get people or just muscle activation to get them back online. Then you have like an uh, over overcoming isometrics. So that's going to be where the external force is uh, the external load. I'm sorry, is going to be um, heavier than the force that I can generate, but it, or equal. I'm sorry, equal force. So I'm think pushing into a wall. I can't move the wall, but the muscles aren't going to, they're not going to lengthen, they're not going to shorten, they're pretty much going to stay the same as I try to, as I push into this wall. Uh, we like to use those in, in parts of warm-ups, um, so think muscle activation, or but we'll also use it at the beginning of particular exercises. So, again, since we're, since we're using pull-ups here, we'll do a pull-up, really driving the elbows down, really, you know, length through the collarbone, sh shoulder blades down and back, trying to stuff them in our back pocket. I'm um, getting a nice isometric here, count for maybe a six second count, come down and then actually go through the full range of motion to exercise when you have a more muscle recruitment going on from the overcoming isometric itself. So those are your three types of isometrics, right? Again, yielding, I mean, I'm sorry, ice, I, 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 your three types of muscle contractions, your isometric, your concentric and eccentric, which generally fall under the category of isotonic. All right, so I hope that was helpful and I will see you in the next video.